starting. All right. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Lehigh Valley. Uh, I'm Anthony Young, the music director, and we're going to be singing some songs here. We're going to start out with a prayer. Just a short technical note. Uh, I've been told if you're viewing us on a cell phone, um, it's best to use it in the landscape format. You can see better on the screen and hopefully see the words. We're going to sing the song Morning Prayer. This is a prayer. And you can sing along if you'd like. The words are on the screen. Let's just bring ourselves together. Let's just take a moment, everybody, if you just breathe in with me and breathe out. Let the goodness in. Release all that needs to be let go of. Join me as we sing morning prayer. surrender to my greatest, highest good. I will release any fear that blocks my way. For every step I take is taken in pure faith, and I am stronger every moment, every day. My mind is willing and my heart is open wide. I trust my instincts and let spirit be my guide. I vow to live a life that's real and true and free. As I continue walking in this mystery. I will surrender to my greatest, highest good. I will release any fear that blocks my way. For every step I take is taken in pure faith. And I am grateful every moment, every day. There may be walls, there may be roadblocks in my way, but I can choose to take a higher path each day. And now I know that what I thought was safe and sound was only habit and regret that held me down. I will surrender to my greatest, highest good. I will release any fear that blocks my way. For every step I take is taken in pure faith. And I am kinder every moment, every day. I am more loving every moment, every day. I will surrender every moment, every day. Let us pray. Sweet, sweet spirit. We thank you for this awesome and beautiful day. We are here together by divine appointment. And we are so grateful to be together in unity. And we send the blessing of unity out into the community and to the world at large. We send peace, and we send love. And so it is. We say amen and amen. Amen. Okay. 
We're going to do an opening song now. We're going to do one we haven't heard from in quite a while. This one's called Radiant Light. So we're going to get your, get your feet tapping, hopefully, and ask you to join in with us with We Shine Our Light. light guiding you on your way guiding you on your way i am the radiant light of god i shine the light of love i am the radiant light of god i shine the light of love everybody wants to shine your light oh people want to shine your light Little children, won't you shine your light? People of earth, come shine your light. Shine the light of love. Shine the light of love. I am the radiant light of God. I shine the light of love. I am the radiant light of God. I shine the light. By the light of my faith, shining both night and day, shining both night and day, I am the radiant light of God. I shine the light of love. I am the radiant light of God. I shine the light of love. Everybody wants to shine your light. Oh, people want to shine your light. Little children want to shine your light. People of earth come shine your light. Shine the light of love. Shine the light of love. Shine the light of love. Thank you, Anthony. That was so beautiful. And now our statements of affirmation. Our affirmative statements express our unity denominational statement of belief, as well as the vision and mission of unity of Lehigh Valley. As I introduce each of our affirmative statements, I invite you to consider joining me in speaking the statement aloud. We hope you also share in the vision and mission for this ministry. What unity believes? There is only one presence, one power, one activity in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. The vision of unity of Lehigh Valley holds for the world. We co-create an awakened world of peace, harmony, and abundance. The mission that is ours to do, united in love, we provide a positive environment for all people to discover and express their spiritual nature. Welcome to Unity of Lehigh Valley's virtual Facebook service. We're so happy that you are with us this morning. And now Anthony will share the, share daily, the word. daily word. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, today's daily word comes with a commercial. Um, did you know that there is an app for the Daily Word? You can find it on your phone. It's in all of the app stores. You just search Daily Word, and there's a. it shows the reading for today. There are meditations that are timed or guided. You can even uh, keep track of ones that were your favorite that really touched your heart. And But one of the features I really love on the app is that it will actually um, speak it to you. And you can actually just close your eyes and let the words come in. You don't have to take the, you know, be rushing through reading yourself. They will do it for you, like this. Sunday, June 14th, 2020. Divine Order. 
Today we affirm, divine order is always unfolding in my life and in the world. And our message reads, as spring ripens into summer each year, new leaves transform bare trees into canopies of green. Tiny seedlings grow into sturdy plants and decorate the landscape with an array of colorful blossoms. I marvel at the divine order demonstrated as the earth renews itself. I recognize that even as the earth appears barren in wintertime, new life was preparing to spring forth. I notice this pattern in my life. I may be demonstrating visible growth in my life, or, like the earth in winter, it may seem that my life is stagnant and barren. I remember that as the seasons of nature change, so do the seasons of my life. Even when it is not apparent to me, I know that divine order is always unfolding in my life and in the world. Our Bible verse for today is from Mark 4, 28. The earth produces of itself, first the stock, then the head, then the full grain in the head. So don't forget to check out the Daily Word app. You might find it useful. And now we're going to take a moment. We're going to ask you to join us in singing as we sing, Love is My Decision. There's way too much hate out there, but love is a decision that we must make. Karen for her work here to help us get ready for our Facebook Live 
and John, who's working the cameras for us today. Thank you so much for your expertise. Last Sunday, I spoke to you about gratitude as a spiritual tool that helps us move from our issues and problems to a solution. Today, I'm going to share with you the second spiritual tool, kindness and compassion, which is really gratitude on steroids. According to the Unity book, Revealing Word, compassion is defined as a human characteristic of love and mercy, prompted by an understanding heart. A compassionate mind sees the error, but does not condemn. From John 8, 11, neither do I condemn thee. Go thy way from henceforth and sin no more. In unity, we define sin as missing the mark of living from our whole divine self. Since all of you are very kind and compassionate people, I guess we can just all go home. But no, we're not gonna do that. Because there's always something that we can learn. Just saying the word kindness spreads this warmth all over my body. Say the word kindness right now, out loud, kindness. And how does that feel? Does it bring up a memory of an act of kindness that you received or one that you gave? I don't know about you, but when I receive or give an act of kindness, it always makes me feel really good. And that good feeling are the chemicals in our body. And how then can we be bummed out by the problems when we receive a nice gift of kindness and compassion from somebody? Each of the spiritual tools that I'm sharing during June and July, they're designed to move you beyond the issue or problem and allows the solution to bubble up into your consciousness. There is a Bible story that I'd like to share with you today, and it's the Gospel of Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 37. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, Well, what is written in the law? How do you read it? In other words, how do you understand it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him, and left him for, off for dead. Now, by chance, a priest was walking down the road, and he turned and he saw this, the man, but he passed him by on the other side of the street. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he crossed the road and went on his way. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and he bound his wounds with oil and wine, and he put him on his animal and brought him to an inn, and he took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and he gave it to the innkeeper to take care of the man while he was gone. And he said to the innkeeper, if I owe you more money when I come back, I'll pay you. Which of the three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to the man, you go and do likewise. Well, this Bible story shows a great deal of kindness and compassion what we don't understand from the scriptures, the relationship between the Jews and the Samaritans. There was no love lost between them, and they were like oil and water. We don't know if the Samaritan knew the man he was helping was a Jew. 
So it was beyond kind that the Samaritan showed such compassion to the man. The story shows us that it is easy to be kind to those we like and love, but is it easy to be kind to those we disagree with or downright don't like? Ouch, you might say. Rachel, don't make me like those people that I don't like. But as truth students, shouldn't we? Be kind and compassionate to others? Except it's not all easy, is it, to like all people? Who comes to your mind in your life that you dislike or have difficulty with? If you can think of a person that fits the description, this is the person that you need to practice kindness and compassion with. Later on in my talk, I'll give you some kindness and compassionate tips that you might want to try. Over my lifetime, I have been the recipient of so many acts of kindness. And this morning, I would like to share two uh, of those acts of kindness and compassion. My very first home as a single parent was a little home in Catasauqua. It was a corner home. And after the first year passed, I decided that I wanted to, to dig a big pond in my backyard. And I was so excited and I researched it and I got all the materials and one fine day I went out into the backyard and I traced the outline of the pond. It was going to be a real big one. It was going to be three foot deep in the middle and have a shelf around it for my bog plants. Oh, this is going to be great. So I grabbed the shovel and I started to dig and I started to dig and I started to dig and the ground was rock hard and there was clay and stones. And I knew that I was never going to be able to dig that pond. And I stood there contemplating, what do I do next? When a young man started walking down the alleyway and he stopped and he said, hey lady, what are you doing? Well, I said, I'm trying to dig a pond, but I'm not very successful. The ground is so hard and there's so many stones. Oh, he said, let me dig it for you. I said, well, that would be great, I'll pay you. No, no, I don't want any money. I just love to dig ponds. And this man, whose name I did not know, spent the rest of the day digging my pond, three foot deep, way big around, with a one foot shelf for my bog plants. I said, thank you, can I pay you? No, you can't. So I said, thank you, and he walked back up the alley and disappeared. What a kind and compassionate person. And then I thought later on, I wonder if that was an angel. My next story is about when I was divorced, we sold our home that we owned together and I owed a ton of money in capital gains tax. I had no idea how I was going to pay that debt. And so tax day came I went to the tax accountant to pick up my taxes. On the way over, I said, Spirit, you got to handle this because I have no idea what I'm going to do. And as the tax preparer was going over my taxes, she said, a kind person paid all of that money. I was absolutely overwhelmed. Thank you, Spirit, for all of these wonderful people in my life. To practice exercising your kindness and compassionate muscles, here are some exercises that you can do at least once a day for the next week. Day one, phone an old friend, a working colleague, somebody that you know socially, somebody that you know that's staying at home during this coronavirus and probably straining against their isolation. Just a friendly call. Hi, how are you? How are your loved ones? How are you doing? I was just thinking about you. Day two, send an email to anyone on your email address list with a nice note of cheer. I was thinking of you and wishing you a great day. If you have a photograph of you and that person, you could attach it and send it to the email or maybe a picture of you and that person with a mutual friend. Day three, Add someone to your prayer list and spend at least five minutes holding the high watch for that person. 
asking for their highest and best good. Day four, activate some snail mail, especially to an older friend or neighbor. Write a friendly note or postcard or a greeting card, maybe even one that would make them laugh. I love to go to the store and pick out funny cards and then keep them and send them to people who've had surgery and they're recovering or recovering from an illness. Whose day isn't made better by a friendly piece of mail? You don't have to show a physical gesture of kindness, but how about sending a loving thought when the person comes to your mind? Day five, send someone a text message to congratulate them on their birthday, their anniversary, graduation, some special occasion. One of the reasons that I like Facebook is that all those birthdays and anniversaries and special occasions are posted and we can send people congratulations. Day six, perform an act of kindness for yourself. Arrange to eat a favorite food, take a walk in a lovely outdoor place, take a luxurious bubble bath or a hot shower, some kind of pampering ritual. Day seven, perform one deliberate act that protects the environment. Pick up some trash, plant a tree. <clears throat> Don't use non-biodegradable uh, plates or, or uh, utensils. Treat all others the way you would like them to be treated. Don't stop after seven days. Write down your intention to do at least one act of kindness and compassion daily. Then do it. Write in your journal the acts of kindness that you do, whether they're planned or unplanned. Acts of kindness are free or cost very little time or money. Here are some other ways that you can do some acts of kindness. Leave encouraging messages where strangers can find them. Last year, there was a movement where people painted flat rocks and put words on them like peace and love. I loved finding them, and then I loved rehiding them so other people might find them. Drop a small amount of change onto the ground for someone to find. My dad used to say to us, don't pick up that change, leave it there for the little children to find. So you can imagine how delighted a little child is to find a penny or a, or, or a dime. Take an elderly person for ice cream cone once their virus is lifted. Write 10 encouraging messages on individual pieces of paper. You are an awesome person. Wishing you a better and better day. God loves you and so on. Fold them in half and put them where people will find them. The desk of the receptionist at work, a fellow co-worker's desk, a park bench, a library book, put them between the pages. Tip your server and put a little note on the tray. Imagine how you would feel if you received one of these little notes. It's also a fun thing to do with your family members. When I helped my daughter, Dawn, pack for her move to Oklahoma, I put in a ton of inspirational little messages between the dishes that I packed and between other uh, boxes. And I know that she had a great deal of fun finding them and reading them. And I think it helped ease her transition between here and there. To exercise your compassion muscle, identify in your, people, in your mind the people that you don't like or people that you don't like to be around. Simply identifying people or groups of people like this and admitting your negative reaction will enlighten you. Select a person or a group of people and look at things you like about them. What are the common things that you have? For instance, we both breathe, we both eat. It sounds funny, but for some people, this is the only place that they can start to recognize something common. Move your thoughts from your head to your heart until you feel compassion. When you feel connected, then move on to another person or group of people and do the same exercise. Continue with your entire list. It may take some time, but when you're done, notice how you feel. You'll probably feel much better and lighter. Open your heart to spirit and with a request for opportunities to be kind and compassionate 
and I guarantee you they will pop up every day. Please instant message me and let me know what other ways you show kindness and compassion. Let me know how have the exercises in kindness and compassion affected you? How do they make you feel? Next Sunday, I will be exploring the third spiritual tool, forgiveness. Please join us here at Unity of Lehigh Valley Live and bring a friend. Join me on Sunday, on Wednesday, 617, for my Wednesday refresh service starting at 7 p.m. Know, dear ones, that the entire universe loves and supports you, and so do I. Have a wonderful week, and God bless you. Now let us prepare for a time of meditation. Find a comfortable spot. Take some deep breaths. Breathe in and breathe out. Let your body relax in your chair. Bring to mind that person that you're having the difficulty with. Picture them standing in front of you. The person that you don't feel kindly towards or compassionate towards. Usually there's at least one person in our lives. Bring your awareness to your heart and send out from your heart a beam of energy from your heart to that person. Send out a beam of love. It may not feel very good right in the beginning, but just do it. Your intention is to connect with that person and send them love. Notice how you're feeling. If you're still feeling a little off and not feeling all of the love, continue to try. Continue to send that beam from your heart to that person. Over time, this will become more and more comfortable because your intention is pure. Your intention is from spirit. We are made in the image and likeness of God. We are made in the image and likeness of love. And all people have that kernel of divine love and divinity within them. You might not like what the person does or says, but I invite you to still connect in love. And now let us take this exercise into the silence.
Now I invite you to take a deep breath and come back to the place. We give thanks to spirit for the kindness and compassion that we give and we receive. And so it is. Amen and amen. And now is our time for the blessing of our tithes and our offerings. Again, drop your awareness into your heart. All of your tithes and your offerings are so beautifully blessed. And we're going to use our statement, our blessing sta celebration of giving statement. Together, the activity of spirit through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Spirit, for your blessings in our lives. Amen. And now the core value we celebrate for the month of June is joy. Living from our oneness with Spirit, we give radiant expression to a lightness of being. Our prayer chaplains continue to be active even while we are social distancing. Our chaplains join you in prayer for your cares, concerns, joys, celebrations, and for every need. Feel free to reach out to your prayer chaplain. Our gratitudes for today, from Karen Ebbison. I would like to thank the many people who have sent notes to the office in support and love. Your kind words mean everything. I miss seeing everyone, and your notes bring me a piece of you. Hugs. And from Marissa Lency, a heartfelt thank you goes out to Karen, Anthony, Reverend Rachel Sue, and Alan Ritz, who successfully delivered a full Sunday service live from the sanctuary. It was a delight to see them live in the church, and it was wonderful to sing along with the music and follow our traditional order of service. Thank you to everyone involved. If you have a gratitude uh, you want to share and, uh, about UNLV and have, or have something to celebrate, uh, if you'd like to send a weekly email, uh, and, I'm sorry, let me try that again. If you are grateful for something about ULV or have something to celebrate and you'd like to see it in the weekly email, just send a note to the office by Tuesday each week. Join Reverend Rachel this Wednesday, June 10th at 7 p.m. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. It is the 17th. Um, live on our Facebook page. The Wednesday Refresh is designed to help you get a midweek spiritual recharge. Join us in the uplifting message and a time of centering. Next week, we will be sharing about the spiritual tool of forgiveness. Forgiveness allows us to look above our problem to find the best solution. Join us next Sunday at 10 a.m. right here live on our Facebook page to find your best solution. Unity of Lehigh Valley continues to incur routine bills even while we are unable to meet each week. Your continued gift assures the ongoing work that we do, helps to maintain our building, and support our staff, and we thank you. To contribute, please go to our website, unityoflehighvalley.org, at the end of the top navigation bar, click on the donate button. You will be directed how to send your gift to ULV through pay PayPal. You can also mail your check directly to the church at Unity of Lehigh Valley, 26 North 3rd Street, Emmaus, Pennsylvania, 18049. You can also set up weekly or monthly payments directly from your bank. Contact the church office if you have any questions about how to get your donations to the church. We are grateful for your continuing giving during this time. 
And we thank you for joining us today. And thank you to Reverend Rachel and Karen, and especially to John for helping with a lot of our technical aspects today. So we're to that point in our service. I'm gonna ask you to get up if you can. Maybe if you're with someone, join hands as we make our virtual circle, our circle of peace. And we see, and, and as we look through our virtual circle, we see all the people that we are connected with. And maybe you wanna even join in, bring in that person that maybe you have that difficulty with, that Reverend Rachel was talking about too, because we all need to share the peace and the love. So we're gonna ask you to join in, in our peace song. and minds of all beings. And so it is. Amen. We look forward to seeing you next week.